tying knocking points today, one of the things that I do as a protocol is I'll get my arrow at 90 degrees to start with and I'll start tying my top knock. Um, so I've actually done three ties here. It's enough to hold it and that way I can take it out of the press and I can look at it and make sure that I'm at 90 degrees. Obviously if I've done this a little bit incorrectly and all of a sudden if my if my arrows already knock high or my arrows already knock low, I would probably just recommend that you take this, remove it, start over to where your top knock, when you first cinch those things down on those first ties and you're getting it tight, make dang sure it's where you need it to be before you do all the rest. It's such an easy protocol. I'm doing double overs and double unders. So I'll do a triple stack on the top above the knock and I'll do four stack underneath. The arrow is what I personally do. Uh, so right now I've, I've tied about half of the ties that I would to complete the top just so that I can take this out and look at it. Right now I'm at 90 degrees, I'm perfect. I'm at a perfect place to start. I'm at 90 degrees, bottom of my arrow shaft's right at the bottom of that C in carbon. And so from here, once I tie the rest of these, I'm already at 90 degrees for my starting point versus tying this first one and looking and then I'm already having to move my rest. If you can tie that top knot and you're at 90 degrees when you're done with that tie, I've got my top knot tied, uh, my top knocking point, and now I'm gonna do the bottom. So one of the questions always is how much spacing do I need between my bottom knocking point and the bottom of my arrow knock? Because if it's too tight, when you pull back, it'll lift that arrow off the rest. You definitely don't want that. If it's too loose, then you'll be able to move that knock up or down a few mil on your string and you really don't want that either because that's gonna be highs and lows down range and those highs and lows can change depending on how steep you're aiming and how much pressure you actually have on that arrow to where it might kick to a different place in that spacing. So what I do, I've got my top one tied, I've started my bottom one here and I've got, you can see there's a small space there. I've got about about a mil in there of spacing. So there's about a mil. And what I'll do is once I've kind of did my double tie and I've cinched that very first one down, what I'll do is I'll kind of just wiggle this arrow just a little bit, just so that I create that space that I need. I'll wiggle that just a little bit and make sure I re-tighten it. Then I'll go ahead and do my bottom one. So now I'm gonna do my bottom one here. And I'm gonna double check this again. So I've got about a little more than a half a mil gap right there. And that's gonna be absolutely perfect. because that half a mil will be gone once this bows at full draw. It won't be pinching. But if you start out with, you know, if you look at every wrap of your center serving, every wrap is gonna be about a mil, maybe, maybe slightly different than that. But each one of those, each one of those wraps that you can hear right there. Each one of those is about the spacing you want. So if I can see one full wrap under that knock right there, that's given me about the perfect amount of spacing to where at full draw, that's gonna be holding that arrow, but not pinching that arrow. We're gonna have good arrow flight going to be able to shoot extreme angles without having any, any issues with the arrow on the rest. And that's just so important because some people mess this up before they've ever even put their D loop on there. And then once that happens, you know, now you've, you've done three things and you're to the D loop and the D loop is wrong because 
honestly one of the first things was wrong too. So if you do it that way, you're going to have way better results. You're going to eliminate your knock pinch. You're going to have better aero flight and you're certainly going to have way better groups down range when it comes to highs and lows. So just like that, I've already completed that. I'm going to burn that all the way down. So now you can see when this is here, we've got just a little bit of movement, which will be perfect once I'm at full draw because it'll take that out, hold that arrow perfectly, but it also won't be too big to where that spacing is moving when I'm at full draw.